I wish, I wish, I wish. I wish for things all day long. And just because it's something that I would kind of like to have happen doesn't make that intrinsically a selfish thing. We need to work for things. We, we like that's that's the interesting thing that makes this world go round is that we have to work at our wishes. If we want something to happen, if we want something to come true, if I want this show to be my full-time job, I have got to put in the effort and put in the work. But it's still a wish. It's still something that I want to happen. It doesn't make it selfish um, that I want this show to be my full-time job. It just means that I have to work for it. Wanting something to happen without putting in the work to make it happen, maybe that's selfish. But again, not not necessarily always. I don't know. It's, it's a weird philosophical thing. Um... There are no answers. There are no answers. Anyway, guys, I feel like this is a good stopping point. We've kind of, um, uh, we've kind of pulled this movie apart. Um, we've gone through. We've scrubbed through. We've kind of talked about how, like, there's there's a lot of, about this movie that doesn't work. This movie also has some redeeming value to it. Uh, but what are your thoughts? I want you to jump down to the comment section below. Leave me. Uh, a few comments as to what your thoughts, oh, pardon me, uh, about Wonder Woman 1984 are. Like I said, there's a lot that doesn't work. There's a lot that doesn't add up. Will Would this movie work as a standalone film if the first film didn't exist? I would argue no, because again, our audiences have come to expect good storytelling, good character development. Um, there was no character development here. There, there was some character development for Cheetah. There was some. Um, when Cheetah realized that she could be selfish and have anything that she wanted, that is what made her kind of a not so nice person. That's what made her a villain. And I think that's an interesting concept to explore. They didn't delve into it anywhere near enough as, uh, what they did. Uh, I also think that this movie suffers from the, the, the too many villains aspect. Um, and, uh, there are mo- uh, Avengers shows that you can have multiple characters, multiple villains, and and it still works. Um, but I also feel like Marvel has kind of cracked the code on that. They know how to make it work. They know how to do it. And everybody wants to shoehorn many, many, many characters and many, many, many villains into their films. But they don't manage their time correctly. They don't tell the story the way the story needs to be told in order to achieve maximum effect, right? Um, yeah, I I wanted, I really wanted to love this movie. In fact, I thought I was going to love this. What isn't to love? Wonder Woman, the 80s. I mean, when I saw in the trailer her kind of using her lasso of truth to swing, kind of rope swing, on lightning, that looks awesome. That looks so cool. The way it played out in the movie wasn't as fun. It was way better in the trailer. I don't know. I don't know. Like, this is a far inferior film to the first one. Supremely inferior. Um, It's not, I'm not going to say it's a bad movie. It's just not a good movie. And I think that's I think that's kind of where I'm gonna end it. Um, it's not a bad movie. It's just not a good movie. It's it's okay. It's fine. There's some redeeming aspects to it. It's not a complete pile of garbage. And I think that that is what is so disappointing about Wonder Woman '84 is that the first film was so good. The first film was so good. Um, it. It incorporated so many elements from the comics and themes from the comics and what it means to be um, um, oh, not ignorant, but uh, innocent. Uh, what it kind of means to be innocent and naive a little bit and f- for those qualities not necessarily to be negative, 
Like those can be your strengths. Um, not necessarily being naive. I, I, I don't want to say that being naive is a strength, but using your assumptions about the world in a naive way to bring about good and positive change is kind of a strong theme. I think that's kind of cool. Um, having her heart. Um, Wonder Woman's femininity in the first film meant so much. And her femininity played a huge role in the first movie. Her femininity didn't mean anything in the second movie. It was just, oh, here's um, X superhero. Put her in here. What is it about Wonder Woman that makes her interesting? What is it about Wonder Woman that makes her connect? Or rather, that the audience can connect with? She's not just another superhero. She is Wonder Woman. Her femininity is so intrinsically tied to her character, obviously. And, you know, everything that I'm saying is like, well, yeah, duh. But it none of that made a difference in this movie. None of that was even referenced in this movie. She was just ex-superhero. Insert superhero here. You know, this movie so easily could have been a Flash movie. This movie so easily could have been uh, a Cyborg movie. This movie so easily could have been a Green Lantern or, um, I don't know, a Martian Manhunter movie. A Green Arrow kind of movie. This movie, the themes of this movie had nothing to do with Wonder Woman. It kind of didn't. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click like. If you really like this video, click subscribe. And if you really, really like this video, click share. Because that is exactly what Scrooge McDuck would want you to do. DuckTales, woo! -hoo!